Good morning, everyone. I'm Dennis Testerman, currently serving as moderator of Presbyterians for Earth Care. Um, not making the assumption that all of us are Presbyterians, but um, as Presbyterians, we are a people who sing our faith. Uh, and I'm sure that might be true for some of those as you as well, um, who are from other denominations or not even linked up to a denomination. Uh, in welcoming us, I wanted to share the opening and the closing verses of a hymn that's in the Presbyterian Glory to God hymnal, um, one that many of us will know. Um, Let us build a house, all are welcome. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live, a place where saints and children's tell how hearts learn to forgive, build of hopes and dreams, and visions, rock of faith, and vault of grace. Here, the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard and loved and treasured, taught and claimed as words within the word. Built of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let us, <clears throat> let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Most of the uh, meetings that I'm involved in, in the Presbyterian world open with a land acknowledgement and we do want to acknowledge the various places that we, um, that we're zooming in from today. Um, we are um, just a little over a week out from um, our indigenous persons holiday that happened Monday of last week and are remembering that we are more than settlers on the land. We are in fact invaders on the land and we are together today on this call because we're people that are setting about healing relationships, relationships with our brothers and sisters, including um, folks of color, indigenous peoples, um, and healing relationships with the land um, that's also suffered from the impacts of um, a rather cavalier um, attitude associated with doctrine of discovery and manifest destiny and the ways that we uh, and our ancestors colonized this part of God's creation. Uh, Presbyterians for Earth Care just celebrated its 25th anniversary. Um, we are thrilled to have reached that milestone and uh, are already looking at the next 25 years and so delighted that you're a part of that journey with us and invite you to find uh, all kinds of opportunities for sharing the gifts that God has given you, given to each of us, um, and add them in the stew pot um, and uh, be a part of the feast that we are working on um, so that everyone can enjoy the abundance and the beauty of God's creation. Um, so glad you could be with us today as we focus on local churches as a vehicle um, as instruments of God's grace, um, the ways, one of the ways in which we gather together as community, as the beloved community and love to figure out and practice earth care. Um, when I think of earth care, I think of health care, that earth care is a form of health care, both healing the earth and healing of ourselves. Um, which brings me to think about self-care as well. Um, so we are going to have some um, first-person perspectives from folks on the ground that have been doing this work um, that I think you'll find inspiring and challenging both at the same time. Enjoy the hour. Well, thank you, Dennis, for that fine introduction. Um, my name is Jane Laping, and I am the coordinator for Presbyterians for Earth Care. And I will be introducing you to the new guide, the new Presbyterians for Earth Care guide about starting a church earth care team. So um, give me a 
minute or so here to share my screen. Okay, there we go. Can y'all see that? Thumbs up. <laughs> All right. So first of all, I'd like to um, acknowledge the Presbyterian Hunger Program for our partnership, um, for hosting this webinar, and especially for um, just to Jessica Maudlin for being our, our technical person, um, getting us all set up, and um, also for helping us promote this, this webinar so that um, a wider audience can be able to take advantage of it. All right, so um, I'd like to give you some background before we get started. In February of this year, uh, Presbyterians for Earth Care launched the Presbytery Earth Care Program. And the purpose of that is to collaborate with individuals and churches to become better stewards of God's creation. There are um, over a thousand Presbyterians and nearly 10,000 churches in the PCUSA. So we felt that working through the 170 Presbyteries was a better choice for a small nonprofit like Presbyterians for Earth Care. So you can read that strategy on the slide. Since um, we launched the Presbytery Earth Care teams, um, we've heard from some of you who are interested in starting an earth care team in your church. Not in your presbytery. So the leadership team got to work and put together this guide to starting a church earth care team. And some of you were kind enough to review it or even proofread it for us. And we thank you for volunteering your time. Uh, many of you may be interested in starting an earth care team for your church or re-energizing an existing team. Others may want to use the guide as a tool for their presbytery to engage churches in caring for God's creation. So now we will have a Zoom poll to find out why you are on this webinar. Okay, so there are two questions. Um, does your church have an earth care team? And the second question, are you involved in an existing or helping to start a new earth care team in your presbytery? So the first question is about churches and the second question is about presbyteries. So if you could click, um, just click on the dot yes or no for each of the questions. And then hit submit at the bottom. And in a few seconds or so, we will see the results. The excitement is building. There we go. All right. Oh my gosh, look at this. Half and half for both. All right. <laughs> I guess I'll be addressing both, um, both Presbytery and, and um, churches. So, so there's one more piece of information I wanna share with you. Um, this guide is not meant to compete with or be a replacement for earth care congregations. Instead, it is the first step to becoming an earth care congregation. Uh, the Guide to Greening Presbyterian Churches, and that is the name of the guide for earth care congregations, reads, step one, form an earth care team of at least two people who are interested in your church becoming an earth care congregation. And you know what? That's all it says. So <laughs> we now have a guide to help you 
do that and form an earth care team in your church. <clears throat> so um, whether or not you hope your church will become an earth care congregation or not, this guide will be useful to you. The guide has five goals to help you start an earth care team and keep it going at your church. Uh, the first one, form a congregation congregational earth care team. We're going to talk about these individually, so I'm just going to read them for now. Meet as a congregational earth care team. This would be like your first earth care team meeting. Schedule activities and events, and boy, this can run the gamut. There's so many things that can be done, and there are uh, suggestions in the guide. Evaluate your efforts. It's a pretty important thing to do so that you know what's going well, what's not going well, and that you don't to spin your wheels on things that aren't working. And then publicize your accomplishments. Um, you know, when something goes well, we're all, we're all feeling pretty good and we want to share that. So there, again, there are many ways that you can publicize your accomplishments and we'll go, we'll go through those. If you would like to follow along um, in the complete guide, you can click on the link that will be posted in the chat box. So to make starting an earth care team easier to visualize in yet another Zoom call, I would like to tell you a fictional story. Now, this is an illustrated story and it may look like my five-year-old grandson drew the pictures, but I actually drew them in Zoom and that's why they look that way. So let us start at Church Wanna Be Better. There's a member of Church Wanna Be Better named Be Busy. Be Busy is a disgruntled member of Church Wanna Be Better. Be thinks, I want our church to be better. We are still using styrofoam cups, throwing everything into the trash, keeping the heat and AC on even when no one is in the building, and letting invasive plants overrun the church grounds. But I am so busy. What can I do? Oh, look, there is Martin Smart One, she says to herself. I will ask him. Um, please note, this is pre-COVID. <laughs> oh, hi, Martin. I want our church to be better, and there's so much we could do. But I am so busy. What should I do? Well, B. I heard that Presbyterians for Earth Care has a new guide to starting a church earth care team. We could have a look at that. So B and Martin take a look at the guide and this is what they found. Goal one is to form a congregational earth care team. This is actually not as big as it sounds. It is a pre-meeting step before your first earth care team meeting for a few people to decide on what the team's purpose should be and to recruit others. B and Martin found examples in the guide of ways to complete the actions and the goal. For action one, they could reach out to people who are on committees that could be involved in earth care, such as property, mission, worship, and education. Talking to their pastor and staff to get their support is always a good idea. Once they have another one or two people, they can get together and brainstorm possible directions, ideas for the church, church's earth care team. It is also a good idea to draft a description of the team and a mission statement to take to a larger group. Once those actions are taken, they can set a time for their first earth care team meeting. Since the pandemic has now curtailed meeting in person in our story, it could be an online or phone meeting. Okay, so we started off pre-pandemic, now we're in pandemic, and um, we could no longer meet in person. B and um, Martin will have to promote the meeting to the church once it is set and invite key people they want on their team. They can do this by phone, email, an article in the church e-newsletter, or they could even make a short video. B and Martin get to work, and the first thing they do is ask Don Downer to join them. 
because everyone knows Don and Don always has time. The three of them talk with Pastor Perfect, an executive educator, about their idea on a Zoom call. They draft a description and a mission statement. Then they are ready to schedule their first church earth care team meeting and invite the proper property committee, Mr. Music Maestro, and wondrous worship leader. Martin B and Don have set a time for their first meeting, put a notice in the church e-newsletter, and invited people they think would also want church want to be better to be better. They read the second goal of the guide and realized their first meeting will be like any other committee meeting. Martin Smart One said, I have led a lot of meetings. I can do that. Be busy is relieved because she doesn't need one more thing to do. Martin Smart One works on the agenda and decides to start with an opening prayer and introductions. He will ask the attendees which environmental issue they care most about. For the purpose, he will use the sample in the guide that they decided on to integrate creation care into the church's Christian witness and ministry. Their mission statement also came from the guide to promote responsible caring for God's creation in all aspects of life. He will allow time for the attendees to decide on a name for the team and brainstorm possible projects. Before the meeting ends, Martin Smart One will lead the attendees in deciding the preferred way to communicate with each other and with the church. Finally, Martin will help the team decide when to meet again and how often. Martin B and Don have their first meeting on Zoom and six people attend in addition to them. They didn't get everything done in goal two, but they got through the important things. They got their purpose down, finalized a mission statement, decided on a name, want to be better stewards, and set a goal for the year. They decided to communicate by email and scheduled their next meeting. At their second meeting, the Wanna Be Better stewards had a great time brainstorming projects and scheduling their first activity. Even Be Busy got excited about thinking of what they could try to do. After all, she was the disgruntled church member who got the team started. The group decided to start with recycling, something that was easy to do and would likely have a high success rate when people were back in the building. An easy success would also build momentum in the team. They checked the church calendar so there were no conflicts, set a time and date, and talked about launching their action in a way that would draw in more people. Martin Smartman was very good at leading the group through the different tasks and delegating them so that he, B, and Don wouldn't be doing everything. This was also good for engaging the attendees and getting their support for the activity. B, Martin, and Don continued to refer to the Green Your Church Guide for direction and ideas. After a year, the Wanna Be Better stewards had 10 people who met regularly, and it was time to evaluate their efforts. Church Wanna Be Better had replaced the styrofoam cups with reusable mugs, installed programmable thermostats to adjust temperature settings, started recycling and composting, and began substituting native plants for the invasive ones. They felt good about what they were able to accomplish in a year and decided to continue. They talked about what went well and what could have been better. They decided to keep the projects going that they had started and add more if there was energy and interest. During their first year, they kept Pastor Perfect and members of the significant staff informed of their progress, problems, and potential projects. Be Busy was proud of Church Wanna Be Better and the Wanna Be Better stewards. She felt that the church really was better and that the stewards could get along without her. It had been a very busy year for B, and she appreciated working with Martin Smart One, Don Downer, and the others who joined the group. 
As much as she knew she would miss being part of the group, she gladly relinquished her position to Laura laid back. The Want to Be Better stewards really had done a lot in their first year and wanted the church to know what changes they had made. They had been doing a good job of publicizing what they were doing during the year. They looked at the choices in the guide and decided to compile all their accomplishments into an annual report with photos so it would be clear how much better Church Want to Be Better had become. And that's the story of Church Want to Be Better and how the Want to Be Better stewards made it better. So if you have questions, please type them into the chat box. Um, once we have heard from all the presenters, we will answer questions. And now we will move from fiction to nonfiction. <laughs> and Owen from Second Presbyterian Church in Little Rock, Arkansas, will tell us about starting and sustaining an earth care team in a large church. Second Presbyterian has 1,800 members. Following Anne's presentation, Nancy Corson Carter from Church of Reconciliation in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, will talk about their successes in a small church. Reconcil Reconciliation has about 187 members. So Anne, I will stop sharing and let you share your screen next. Okay, Jane, thank you so much. So let's see here. Here we go. Okay. Jane, thank you for running through the, uh, the new guide. That's very helpful and it's um, very um, uh, yeah, akin to what we did at Second Presbyterian here in Little Rock. So I'm glad to share what we've been doing these last few years and uh, to field questions later on um, um, anything you'd like to know more information about. So my husband Rick and I joined Second Presbyterian in 2006 and little did I know that 13 years later I would become our first uh, sustainability coordinator on a, a part-time um, volunteer basis. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to uh, to elevate this role in our, in our congregation. So while we had an environmental um, ministry or committee back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, there wasn't one on board or, or there wasn't one when uh, we joined the church 14 years ago. So given my interest in creation care, I felt like this would be a good way to become involved in the life of this church, a very large church. I had only been uh, a member of small churches before. Um, so it was a great way to, um, to kind of carve out a space for myself and to uh, contribute to the greater good. Um, after discussing my plans with one of our ministers and getting her blessing, I formed our current Earth Care um, group in 2009. Uh, we had great attendance at our meetings after publicizing them in the church newsletter, so that was one of the best ways of recruiting and just kind of word of mouth um, with various, um, and to advance, there we go. Um, and as suggested uh, by Jane's presentation there in the guide, and as well as the uh, Earth Care Congregations, um, a guide to greening Presbyterian churches, we formed our, um, our, for our congregational Earth Care team, which we called Environmental Stewardship. Um, and we even um, held a logo contest. So this is the result of that contest. And we um, made this available on signage and a banner. And so anytime we uh, have a, you know, any kind of uh, presentation or um, display, we will, we will use those items. Um, and I'll show you later, we actually printed them on some t-shirts. So in 2009, we were invited to pilot the new PCUSA Presbyterian Mission Agency's Earth Care Congregations program, which we were very honored to, uh, to have been invited to. Um, and for 10 years, we have been a certified ECC and we've had an annual budget through our outreach ministry. We track our progress using the framework that ECC um, suggests, which is worship, education, facilities, and outreach. So I've broken out kind of some of our programming uh, in those four areas. 
So in the area of worship, we had a blessing of the solar panels uh, ceremony following our worship service, uh, one of our worship services in 2009, when our new solar panels went online. And I'll talk about those more in a minute. Um, for a number of years now, we've been purchasing Eco Palms for Palm Sunday worship services. And uh, we've had various Earth Care themed sermons and worship components and worship services over the years. Um, and we've given minutes for, minutes, uh, minutes for mission on creation care, a uh, number of those over the years as well. In the area of education, uh, we enhanced our church website by creating pages for environmental stewardship um, on this, uh, this graphic here, this uh, image of our website on the left side of this slide, you'll see the Earth Care Congregation logo. If you click there, it'll take you to the interior pages for environmental stewardship and uh, also on the top of the, um, on the bar up here, you can also get there through um, uh, those links as well. So we tried to make it easy for folks to find information about what we had going on um, at the church. We also included a number of creation care tips in uh, many issues of our church newsletter. Um, as I mentioned before, we gave away uh, sweat-free t-shirts with our um, environmental stewardship logo on them. Um, we created an earth care bulletin board in a high traffic area of the church. We've offered short and long-term education courses, including um, such topics as ethical eating, global warming, um, stewards of God's creation, a biblical understanding of the relationship between Christians and the environment. And the one you see pictured here in the middle, a world of health connecting people, place, and planet. Um, we've had screenings of environmentally themed films, such as Carbon Nation that you see uh, pictured here. We've had creation care displays in the church narthex um, for various occasions uh, throughout the year, um, often around Earth Day. You see a couple of photos here of, of us staffing that display um, and our banner um, there on, on one of the tables. Um, we've offered creation care um, uh, sessions with our youth during vacation Bible school. We've had green themed uh, fellowship picnic. We have an annual uh, fall picnic at Ferncliff Camp and Conference Center. Not this year, obviously, uh, but one year we made that uh, a particularly fo a focus on, um, on being green. Um, our youth have distributed reusable shopping bags. That was a, a project uh, that they initiated. And in the area of facilities, um, last year we installed 81 solar panels in a parking lot array and um, also two car chargers. And I think um, at that time, and we may still be, uh, the only church in the state that has um, uh, electric car chargers. Um, we began composting with the Urban Food Loop um, last year as well. It's a service that provides you with containers that you put out your compostable um, materials and, um, and they pick it up weekly uh, from the church. Um, we also installed motion sensors for the lights in eight, eight of our bathrooms. Um, and we've recycled for a number of years various materials. Currently, we're recycling mixed paper and cardboard, steel cans, aluminum cans, uh, plastic bottles, ones, twos, and threes. Um, and because our home programs don't uh, program uh, typically for most residents in Little Rock doesn't include um, number five plastics any longer, we encourage res um, our congregation to bring um, those plastics up to the church so they can recycle at church. Moving on to outreach, um, we, this is the area that we've probably um, devoted the, the most time and um, uh, have had the most um, you know, programmatic, programmatically um, developed aspect of our um, of environmental stewardship at second. Um, we hosted the Drawdown Conference um, a couple of years ago with Katherine Wilkinson, who was the senior drawdown uh, writer and had a really good response from the community uh, for that. Um, we support uh, environmental initiatives at Ferncliff Camp and Conference Center, of which there are many. Uh, many of you may know that. 
Um, here you see pictured on the right side the Eco Center, uh, which is a straw bale a construction and currently is housing our nature preschool or the nature preschool at uh, Ferncliff. We've supported Solar Under the Sun mission to alleviate uh, energy poverty. Um, here you see several folks from Second uh, who participated in the uh, uh, solar uh, training that is offered typically uh, a couple times a year at Ferncliff. Um, that has gone virtual uh, for this year. And uh, if you're interested in that, I can get you more information about Solar Under the Sun. Um, we've hosted various presentations on environmental issues like um, natural gas fracking, um, home water conservation, and solar uh, panel installations. So we hosted, uh, or we sponsored rather, an eco steward from our congregation. Uh, with our, um, our budget. Um, we've conducted collection events for our local Habitat for Humanity Restore, and that was very successful. Uh, we participated in the National uh, Solar Tour last year. That was virtual again this year. Um, and um, we've screened a number of documentaries, um, Food Inc., Gasland, and The Natural State of America come to mind. And we've also done one in conjunction with Sierra Club on mountaintop removal. Also in uh, outreach, we have hosted a community-wide vegan potluck, encouraging people to eat lower on the uh, the food chain and um, which is better for certainly our bodies as well as the environment. We adopted a one mile stretch of University Avenue, which is a major thoroughfare in Little Rock. And uh, you hear some of, you see there some of our intrepid uh, cleaners. We, we commit to going out several times a year and, and cleaning that um, stretch of roadway. Um, we provide meeting space for a conservation group called the Ozark Society. Um, and um, they've been meeting at our church for a number of years and uh, appreciate the good work that they do. Um, we've support, so also supported local sustainability, sustainability organizations and community gardens, uh, organizations like Arkansas Interfaith Power and Light, Arkansas Sustainability Network, Felder Farms, Village Commons, and Dunbar Gardens. Um, at one time, we had hosted a seasonal uh, weekly farmer's market in our church parking lot. I hope we'll be able to do that again. Um, and we became active members with Presbyterians for Earth Care, which is an affiliation we've been really proud of over the years. So we've um, been honored with a few awards over the years. And most recently, we um, received the Restoring Creation Award um, from PEC, and we're very grateful for that um, acknowledgement of our efforts. Um, also this year, we earlier in the, the year, we won uh, Sustain the Rock Award from um, the City of Little Rock. Uh, the Sustainability Commission selects uh, winners from uh, various categories, and we won in the nonprofit category this year for our efforts. Um, we've also been presented with um, the Faithful Friend Award from Arkansas Interfaith Power and Light, who uh, has also given us a grant um, for the solar uh, car chargers that we talked about earlier. Uh, so with that, I will um, invite you to enjoy uh, Nancy Corson Carter's uh, presentation um, on um, her, uh, their efforts at a smaller congregation. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you so much, Anne. What an exciting uh, array of activities and, and all you have, you've given us tons of inspiration. So yes, I um, am Nancy Corson Carter, facilitator of Earth Care Committee at the Church of Reconciliation in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Our congregation, as Jane said, has about 187 members rather a different number than Ian has. <laughs> so our committee was formed uh, in 2005. We became an earth care congregation in 2010. We currently have five members uh, since our sixth member, our minister, has retired and we now work with an interim. Our budget is small. Okay. Here we are, uh, four of our enduring six from left to right, K. Robert Folkvine, myself, um, our minister, uh, Mark Davidson, and Sue Regeer. 
uh, missing are Lil Royal and Ann Loomis. Our story uh, began in 2005 um, as a team, and the key really was leadership uh, between myself and um, um, our, with Reverend Mark. Um, there had been a small earth care uh, team, I think, a number of years previously, but then that wasn't existing. So we really began again, and I was really grateful for his support, and uh, we've remained uh, pretty much stable, the six of us, over the years. Um, I think some of this, uh, even though we tried to elicit uh, new members, was due to the fact that we're a small, socially active church with so many folks taking on so much that they really can't add anything else. They give us lots of uh, support and, and uh, moral um, backing, but um, we have stayed in that, in that number. I've continued to carry most of our team leadership. Um, so I, and I would say it was notable that um, in 2003, I retired uh, from teaching. And also in 2005, I had, had just finished being moderator of PEC, Presbyterians for Earth Care. And because of that, and also then in the mid-teens, Sue, who is the person all the way on the right, Sue Regeer, went on the PEC board. And the two of us are, have done a lot of sharing energy and ideas back and forth with PEC, and that's been really important for uh, what has happened at our church and our team, um, as well as for the, the wider uh, PEC and PCUSA um, area. So, okay. About listening and learning. Well, obviously, um, what we uh, saw was that we needed to uh, talk with each other and find out what our interests were. Uh, we needed to talk with other people in the congregation and see what their interests were um, and what ways we could serve uh, as an earth care team. Um, we kept our ears and eyes open uh, to uh, what was going on locally. And I might just asterisk here uh, something from um, what Jane had said about evaluating efforts we found that after we became an earth care congregation in 2010, that it, every year we needed to reapply for that earth care congregation uh, affiliation and always doing that and sharing that with the various parts of the church um, from buildings and grounds to uh, worship and outreach um, and teaching that it was a good way to see what we had done and also where we might learn to go forward. So that evaluation was always um, an important part of, of how we saw where we were going. Faith centering, uh, of course we um, began meetings with prayers and ended them. Uh, Reverend Mark uh, often led Earth or Sabbath with sermons and, and gave help in writing liturgies and whatnot. Um, we listed, uh, we, we looked at various sources related to biblical and theological bases. And so uh, there will be a link in the chat box uh, to some of those sources and other ideas that, that will come up in this presentation. Starting small, you'll see here, we have on the, the side our, our woodsy owl and the um, rain barrel. That was one of the things that we began with. It was a drought time when we first began our team. And we, we looked around to see what things could be clearly helpful and could be done fairly easily by a small number of people. And uh, that was one of the things we did. We found that our local county water and sewer authority had free low flow shower heads and leak detector dye tablets and plenty of materials about saving water. So these were all simple ways that we found to introduce uh, earth care to the congregation. Uh, we also uh, did buy eco, -psalm, eco palms for songs, uh, Palm Sunday and um, put in the bulletin various tips about eco care, how to mow lawns to best advantage to care for them and uh, various other things that we could put in the uh, worship bulletins on Sundays. Okay. In terms of en enlarging concerns uh, locally, we've collaborated with Interfaith Power and Light locally uh, for various programs and films and announcing our programs and their news. 
uh, a local paper carried news of religious groups like ours, and we used it to announce programs. Uh, what you see here is um, one of the films that we shared uh, with the um, public uh, it called a sea change about ocean acidification, which features a grandfather who investigates what ocean acidification is and its dangers um, with his grandson Elias and future generations in mind. Um, other things we did uh, were we uh, we've arranged various congregational letter writing and about issues such as offshore oil drilling. Uh, which has come up again in North Carolina, the Atlantic Coast Pipeline infringing on indigenous land in North Carolina, luckily it's been stopped, and the climate crisis. We led our session to issue a protest against fracking in, fracking in North Carolina. In 2019, Sue Regeer led the session to prepare an overture on fossil fuel divestment for our presbytery. Okay. And then about um, the idea of creating annual events soon after we formed, because um, I had an affiliation being on the board of a New Hope Camp and Conference Center nearby. And in fact, our, our church is a supportive member of the New Hope Camp and Conference Center and various persons now taking place uh, on the board from our church. Uh, we began to celebrate an annual springtime Earth Sabbath there. Um, it's a special day with a brass group named Brassissimo, uh, led by a congregational member playing. We invite folks to bring picnic lunches and to walk the labyrinth before or after worship. Next slide, please. And here is a picture of us uh, with our Earth Sabbath closing circle. This is in 2019. Um, here we are uh, standing outside the pavilion where we've uh, had the worship service. And um, instead of doing this in our church house, all in a circle around the, pew, uh, around the chairs, we're out on the uh, soccer field at New Hope Camp and Conference Center singing in Christ there is no east or west, what we usually sing at the end of every one of our services, again in 2019. Um, so I'm also thinking that as we're showing you these pictures, that this is all before COVID-19. So I'll say a, a little bit about that um, in a few minutes. Okay. And Native American Sunday is something we're, we're grateful to have begun. Uh, this photo shows uh, me with our guest minister, Vivette Jeffries Logan at New Hope Camp and Conference Center uh, for Earth Sabbath. She's a citizen of the Okanichi Band of the Saponi Nation, the indigenous people of Orange, Alamance, and Caswell counties in North Carolina. Two of our Earth Care Committee members, actually me and Sue, attended the PEC National Conference in the Columbia River watershed in 2018 and met tribal peoples who shared their experience of the abusive doctrine of discovery Dennis has mentioned. We came back and taught adult classes about this, learning all the while ourselves. We wrote an acknowledgement of our participation in using uh, the doctrine of discovery um, against native peoples and titled it Honoring First People on the Land. We listed tribes in our area of North Carolina, whose land we now occupied. We obtained sessions approval to, appro to post this document in our Narthex, and we've initiated an, an, an annual celebration of a Native American Sunday. You will find um, material about that in case you're interested in doing that or um, going further with doing that about uh, Reverend Irv Porter, who is Associate Native American Intercultural Congregational Support in the PCUSA, and also uh, other materials uh, that we have about um, Native American uh, Sunday and uh, commemorating it uh, in your own region. Next. Here um, is a gathering of youth at our uh, Earth Sabbath. And, um, 
we aim very much to involve youth in our Earth Sabbath and in other uh, parts of what we do. Here, uh, a group reads a piece by Alison Davidson based on Swedish teenager Greta Thunberg's call for attention to the climate crisis in 2019. Again, a reference to this text. In fact, the whole text of this uh, reading is included in the, in the packet that uh, we will have. Other things, I guess, that we have, I might say, that we have done to um, bring youth into uh, what we do is we have um, sometimes invited uh, youth to, um, or yes, to have a, a pizza supper with us when they have their usual program for us to present what we do and for us to listen to them and what they're doing in their high schools and all. And so that's, that's been a beginning of uh, doing more things with them, usually in, um, the uh, uh, the times in the summertime when we get together for vacation Bible school, we have programs in which we take uh, students um, from the youth uh, program of all ages on earth walks. Um, we've done that particularly focusing on trees and whatnot. So here, uh, the last um, one of our slides, um, the whole idea we have, and this is Earth Sabbath, is of bringing the congregation together. Uh, to uh, sing hymns, to think about uh, various topics and ways we can all become involved in earth care. Um, as I said, you know, we've had to redo uh, much of our programs due to the pandemic. You can probably think back about what we've presented and think some of these things are possible to do. Um, uh, if you're Zooming or whatever, we have just Zoomed our delayed uh, 2020 uh, Earth Sabbath. Um, and a few of us presented the program from our sanctuary and the congregation viewed it from home. We post net letters, uh, notices for letter writing and such on church weekly e-blasts. Our team meets by Zoom and keeps open to other ways to adapt our mission creatively with Holy Spirit's guidance in these challenging times. So I'll just, uh, in closing, uh, quote Reverend Bill Gibson, one of our PCUSA I, I can call him an eco-justice saint. He gives this overall advice. It is important, he says, in the realization and acceptance of grace, however grim the current situation, however rocky the road, however distant the destination, that there is always hope to sustain the journey. So. I believe Jessica will open it up for questions in just a, a moment. Yeah. Um, if are you ready for that, or did you have anything you wanted to say first, Jane? No, I just I just do I do want to put up this slide um, so that people um, have a, a contact. If you would like to contact any of the um, presenters today, um, you can send. Um, Sorry, messed that up. <clears throat> While you're bringing that up, um, I would just, one of the things um, that has come up a bit in the chat box is um, there's a difference in Zoom meetings and Zoom webinars. And so for the webinar, all of the participants um, cameras aren't shown. Um, so that's for the folks asking about that. Um, as Dennis mentioned, you can click on the participants um, icon at the bottom of your screen and you can see um, who all the participants are on um, with us today. Um, also, um, one of, I, I have heard Nancy and Anne both name this, but a question that has come up a few times now is about youth leadership in your earth care teams um, or your green teams at your churches and um, how, how, if at all, you've seen that, um, more about um, how you're engaging them or how you've handled leadership tran um, transition, um, if you've included them, because youth are, uh, move on much, much more quickly than other folks do often. So I don't know if anyone could speak to that. Well, hmm. I could say 
Am I heard? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, I could say, well, you know, we're in a, a, quite a time of transition. We are going to have our second interim soon. Um, still haven't quite gotten around to having a team to find our permanent minister. And we have a new uh, youth um, leader, and she's wonderful. Um, and she really understands Zooming, and uh, she's able to bring our uh, youth into all sorts of wonderful programs. And I think so far we've, we've engaged together with her in like that uh, pizza supper and um, uh, having them, um, talking with them, you know, about things and having them be participants in uh, various programs that we're doing. But um, that's, that's a place for, that we need to grow. We're certainly open and welcome. But you know, again, there, um, this wonderful new youth person is so engaging that um, every week the, the students are doing wonderful things. So we're just going to have to, we have a meeting coming up, our Earth Care team, uh, this uh, Thursday night. We're going to have to talk about, you know, how can we come in and say, hey, can we help do this? So I think that's where we are. I'm sure Anne has some other thoughts about that. Um, that's a great question. Um, we would love to engage more with the youth um, and really all of the ministries at, at Second Pres. And, um, and so in, in recent months, um, certainly before the pandemic hit, I'd reached out to uh, our, our ministers and staff um, associated with youth in particular um, to find some ways in which, you know, we could uh, engage the youth and uh, or ways in which earth minister, earth care ministries could support the work that um, that they are doing um, we have invited them to participate in um, our adopt a street cleanups um, as, as I mentioned they had already come up with the idea of doing the um, the bags and uh, which uh, initially went to new members so it was uh, it kind of held all the new member uh, packet information that um, that they would receive when joining the church. Um, but we have a number of ideas in which um, we'd hope to be able to implement here in um, the coming months and, and years. So I would love to hear what other people are doing with regard to youth and, and earth care. Yes. Um. So I, I think another question that I saw come up, um, I don't know if Jane or Dennis would like to speak to this just briefly, is um, there was a question about um, how PHP and the Earth Care Congregation certification is separate from Presbyterians for Earth Care. Um, I, I can speak to that a little bit, or if Jane or Dennis would like to jump in. Um, to yeah, I can, I can respond because I've responded before. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so Earth Care Congregations is administered by the Presbyterian Hunger Program. So when you send in your application or your renewal, it goes to Jessica. What um, Presbyterians for Earth Care does is we promote the program. So we, um, you know, we have it on our website. Um, we respond to questions, usually sending them to Jessica. And yeah, we, we definitely support it. It's a great program. And, but, you know, I do want to make the distinction that, that what I've just presented to you is not to replace that, but to augment it. Um, I, I would also, um, one of the resources I can share with Jane, if you have seen the most recent issue of the Presbyterian Hunger Program's newsletter, we have a nice, we've put together kind of a who's who in, in earth care and environmental work within the denomination that kind of explains the difference um, in a variety of groups. So uh, Presbyterians for Earth Care, Fossil Free, PCUSA, um, the Hunger Program and, and several different groups. So that might be helpful um, as well. Um, I, another question that I, um, uh, there was a question about, uh, 
how, if at all, either of your congregations have incorporated um, uh, food work as part of the environmental justice work. And I know there's a little bit more of an in-depth conversation happening, but I just, um, I noticed um, both of you have mentioned some things about meals, but I didn't know if there was any uh, food desert work specifically that you have done as part of your work um, as green teams at your church, it looks like is the question. Um, so at Second Pres here in Little Rock, we have supported the work that other organizations have been doing along those lines. Um, it's not um, something that we've invested a lot of time in, unfortunately, as a congregation um, as yet. Um, but we are pleased to be able to support um, the work of others along those lines. Um, as I mentioned, we have hosted a, um, a farmer's market in our uh, church parking lot. Um, and, um, and we are working with our food services manager on uh, providing more plant-based meals. Um, probably uh, at your church, they're, they're f still fairly meat intensive and um, you know, it just takes education and, um, and uh, a little encouragement sometimes to um, um, move beyond the, the expected or um, the normal or, um, just to have a little change there. So those are some things we're doing along the lines of food. I could just say, uh, we can't take a special ownership of this, but uh, one of the youth is very outspoken about being vegan. And in some of the youth programs, he's, he's presented that and talked about that in, in good, um, um, ex to a good extent. I, I might also say that when you're in a small church, it's interesting uh, where, where you have space and where you don't have space. Um, it just hit me as, as I'm thinking about this. Uh, we, we just were a sanctuary church for over two years. Uh, luckily, it ended well that our person was able to stay here and was not deported. She used our kitchen the whole time. Uh, and it was, it was not something that we could use the kitchen much, except uh, that there were, there were certain um, uh, celebrations that were held there. Uh, we did, the, the, the simplest thing we did was we learned from another group, we're, we're part of a uh, uh, Orange County, Chatham County, uh, multiple churches group, and they did a program that was very good on composting and uh, various other ways of saving um, food um, leftovers. And one of the things we did was we uh, uh, got people to bring their own cups. I mean, that's pretty simple. But on the other hand, it began to save us. Um, of course, now, it, now it's not possible. I mean, now it means nothing until we go back into the church. But uh, that was one thing that happened that had at least indirectly to do with food and eating. Um, um, I am, I know we are at time. I do see one more question that someone, um, it might be helpful for folks to hear the answer to if you have a moment. Um, but there was a question about um, if either of your green teams have a budget and if so, if you're comfortable sharing how much and or how do you report to your session about that? So um, a, that might be a of interest to folks if either of you would like to speak to that briefly. Sure, I'll be glad to. We have an annual budget and have for the, the last few years. It falls under our outreach budget, uh, which is where we've nestled environmental stewardship um, presently. Um, and tip it, and it's, it's ranged from $1,000 to $1,500 annually. Um, and the reason we have it under outreach, it's um, our, our congregation um, uh, gives 25% of our budget to outreach annually. And because this is one of those initiatives, um, that's how we, we like to track it within um, our church um, our church budget. So uh, we're very fortunate to have that funding and, uh, and it's given us a lot of flexibility um, as to what kind of programming and initiatives we've been able to do. I'll tell you what we have. Uh, our budget has been sometimes in the past $350 of the last budget. It was times, um, I mean, that's part of being in transition. Um, and uh, 
being a, a, a somewhat eldering church, although that doesn't always mean that you have less funds, um, there are fewer. If we need uh, and special programs, we can go to the Justice and Peace Committee, which has much uh, bigger purse, but um, funding is not something that we have lots of. Um, and so we are at time now. I don't know, Jane, if you have um, closing words for folks. Um, there are a few questions that we did not have time to answer. I will be saving the chat log and passing that along to um, PEC. And so I'm sure that Jane will get back with you as well as um, sharing the resources that have been named. But um, if you have anything in closing, Jane. Yeah, I don't have much to say other than um, thank all. Of, I thank all of you for being on this on this um, webinar, and that I will be sending you the link to the webinar so that you can share it um, among your churches or other people you know. And again, the um, <clears throat> excuse me the uh, the email is on the screen um, if you have any further questions. So um, thank you all. I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Okay. Oh.